Good afternoon, everybody. And I want to thank each and every one of you to have taken the time to come and uh, spend this afternoon with us. Uh, we're very lucky today to have uh, two amazing artists join us uh, who will tell us a little bit more about you know, their career, how they go about presenting themselves online, some of the, you know, their approach towards managing and enforcing their copyrights and different best practice um, to, to have bring efficiencies in, in the management of, a, of an artist's business, which is not always easy. But before we dive into that, uh, I'd like to take a minute to tell you a little bit more about Imprimo. We'll go into more detail uh, later, but I know we'll talk a little bit about it during the chat. So I think it's important that uh, I give you a little bit of a, an idea of what is Imprimo, what is our idea, where does it come from, and more important, where it's going. So bringing back to the inception of Imprimo, Imprimo was created out of uh, Access Copyright, which is a um, copyright management organizations for artists and and uh, and authors, mainly in the publishing space. Um, but uh, you know that the, the also outside of that. So the the idea was we wanted to build a platform where artists could showcase their work online. Um, in an engaging way while making sure that, you know, they get proper attribution for their work um, and um, and that they're able to have a platform that reduce some of the administration. So talking with the different artists, we realized that uh, what was needed for the art industry is kind of what has happened to the business world, uh, which is LinkedIn. Right. The way that LinkedIn connect the companies, the employees and the recruiters together in Primo is meant to connect the artists, the galleries, the marketplaces and the art lovers. So we started building this platform. We started on one side of it, which is the artist side. Today, what you see on Imprimo is you have the ability to showcase your CV online, present your work, organize your collections, uh, and be able to do it in a very engaging way um, so that you can you know, share, share the, the experience with your audience and build those social connections. As we evolve through our journey, you're going to see that we'll build gallery profiles and marketplace profiles. Some of that is coming near very soon. Some of that is coming a little bit later in the in 2023. But the idea is that you will be able to interact with different art marketplace and art and art galleries the same way that you would connect with companies or recruiters on LinkedIn. There'll be some chat built in, and you'll have the ability to to make these connections. As well as once we onboard the art lovers, who will be able to give you a lot more data and analytics and so on. Uh, I know this is something that a lot of people has asked. We're working on it very hard. We want to make sure that when we, we launch something um, that is bringing a lot of value. So at a, at, a, at a high level, we're trying to build something that is like LinkedIn but for the visual arts. Uh, and that's what we have so far with Imprimo. So we'll show you a little bit more about that um, later on. We'll give you a tour. We'll show you how to set up your profile for success. Um, and that's that. So before I get started with our conversation with our artists, I want to remind everybody uh, that we actually have a promotion going on with Copyright Visual Art. Uh, if you want to join in Primo, I am putting it in the chat right now. Uh, you can simply click on the link and sign up. The next, first six months are going to be free uh, for everybody on the call. After the six months is expired, your fee is going to be $8.99 a month. Uh, you can choose to cancel anytime you want, um, but you know for the next six months, it's free. If you need any help building your profile, we'd love to help you. You can simply send us an email, info at imprimo.ca, uh, and we'd be glad to help you. And with that, I'd like to introduce our, our two artists. I got Randa and Veronique today with me. Uh, I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves. And while they introduce themselves, I will show you a little bit about uh, their work that they have on Imprimo to give you a better idea about who they are as an artist. So Randa, why don't we start with you? If you can just come off mute, introduce yourself. In the meantime, I will show them a little bit more about your work. Uh, okay, uh, good morning to everybody and uh, thank you Amprimo for this invitation. I'm so happy to be with you this morning. So I'm Syrian Canadian artist, painter based in Laval, Quebec. Uh, was born and grew up in uh, Damascus, Syria and moved in Dubai uh, to Dubai in 2012. Uh, finally uh, settled in Canada in 2017. Graduated from the uh, University of Fine Art in uh, 2000. Then I continued my studies at, uh, at the University of Science of Media in 2008. Uh, that, uh, this uh, uh, double major gave me, gave me a special vision of the life and beginning work uh, with the eyes of the photojournalist and the heart of the artist. 
uh, finally, when I uh, arrived in Canada, I I get uh, I got a diploma in starting business business in 2019. Uh, my movement between uh, East and West uh, contributed to build my personality and uh, my subject. Uh, so. Uh, I created a major team of my artwork at a culture con connected between strongly roots, memories of the Orient, and uh, my life uh, in uh, or to, sorry today in uh, Western civilization. Uh, my artwork shed the light uh, on. Uh, uh, on many humanitarian issues, express uh, the issues of the injustice and poverty. Um, my work has been recogni recognized by critics and um, art historian and collector. I honored by uh, several office, uh, official, uh, official uh, bodies, uh, and I was uh, granted several awards for my work uh, that were exhibited in many countries around the world. So if you want to know more about, about me, you can visit my page, my profile on Emprimo or uh, during my uh, official website, randahijazi.com. That's all. Great. Thank you, Randa. Vero, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey okay. as an artist? Okay. Uh, my name is Vero Nikwaknin. I was born in North Africa and I've lived on four continents. Um, I studied, uh, I actually have a very technical background, and then I studied uh, art history a little bit at Le Louvre, and I started um, just painting and taking classes a bit everywhere I live, which is uh, in Asia, in um, New York, in Toronto, in Paris. Um, I have uh, started as a painter, uh, abstract painter for many years, but I like to touch everything. I like to try everything. The world is like, has so many options that uh, I can never stop looking for new things to do. Uh, I have uh, shown mainly in the US, in Canada, in um, Korea, uh, and um, what can I add? I do, I have been doing sculpture for the past five years. I'm a member of a couple of, uh, uh, of the New York, uh, the Art League in New York. I'm a member of the uh, Al Green Sculpture Studio here in Toronto. And uh, I, I just have to make art. It's it's a compulsion. <laughs> the disease. <laughs> That's great. Um, thank, thanks for that, Vero. And we'll that we'll get started with our panels. So you know, to, when we I know the two of you have been making art for quite a long time uh, across a, a few different mediums. Um, so when it comes time to promoting yourself as an artist, I think I'll think a lot of things have changed over the last you know. 10, 15 years, uh, the importance of having an online presence has changed quite dramatically. Um, why don't you guys tell us a little bit more about how you're going about building your online presence, whether that's on website, your Imprimo profile, on, on Instagram, you might be even doing TikTok. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you're going about this? Reina, we'll start with you and then Vero, you can, um, you can take it away. Okay, well, um, for me, the social media uh, uh, has two sides. It uh, can harm you and waste your time for nothing. On the other hand, you can get a lot of benefit from it. That is depend to what you want from it. So if we used it wisely, we find it a good opportunity to provide real and meaningful content. Uh, before we starting on uh, the social media, we have to ask ourselves many questions. So what is the goal uh, we want to reach? Who is our target audience? Uh, in which region of this world is located? From here, we, we, we can start an, an, uh, as an artist by creating and publishing our own content. 
so we have to pay attention about the difference in culture between people. It's true that the art is, um, is universal language and uh, concern every, everybody, but we have to pay attention about this uh, difference. Um, for example, uh, the topic that are uh, suitable for the people of the North America, uh, maybe it's not uh, suitable for the people of the Middle East or for Europe. Uh, plus, we have to pay attention uh, about the rush hour in each area to, to, uh, to, to post. Uh, we have, uh, we must, uh, doesn't uh, publish any uh, things that, that may uh, distract the viewers' attentions for the main goal of our presence on the social media. We have to focus on our goal and all our posts must to be uh, about that. Uh, usually I don't uh, share general posts from anybody. I don't get involved in any topic outside the um, um, outside the, the, the framework of my goal, I can do that in my story for fun or to, to spotlight uh, on the important case, but uh, my goal um, has to be always clear. Uh, this is what I did pro uh, previously on the Facebook and I achieved it to my goal. And you now I do the same on the other platform like Instagram, LinkedIn, and like that. That's all. Yeah. And what about you, Velo? How are you, how are you going about your online presence? Well, um, let's talk about the challenges because I think yep. challenges are universal in the in for the art world. Yep. The objective for me is for everyone is to increase exposure, the right exposure. So once you understand that, then you have to either invest time or money or time and money. And uh, sometimes you need a lot of technical skills that you may not have that you're going to have to buy. And the whole thing ends up to be a huge mountain, very, very intimidating. My story is that I started a while ago. So I, I took the approach of growing things organically. So organically, I mean, I started with a little seed. For example, I started a website. It was a little website with limited things. And then slowly as time went and as I, as I was producing, I was adding things there. Uh, and that's an easy way, easier way to do if you don't want to attack the whole mountain or you don't want to pay someone to develop your website. Um, the other thing also is that today there's new tools. Right. So if I started 10 years ago and I was part of Instagram a long time ago and Instagram changed and evolved into a different beast. Uh, today, you have different different beasts out there. And I think that uh, platforms like Amprimo can actually help you uh, start your website. You don't need to build like I did the big website. You can just have a page that operates like your website. So for me, that that's an important thing to understand because I know a lot of artists are not ready to invest the, the time, the effort, the money. And the other thing that I think is if Imprimo delivers on this, it's going to be a big win for artists. And it's the fact that this promise of integrating the online galleries with the tool is huge because I personally, I hate to spend time promoting myself. I hate to spend time entering data into platforms. I hate to do that because it's time cut away from playing or from doing the stuff I like. So if you guys can do that, I'd be forever, you know? <laughs> Reconnaissance, like we say in French. Okay, I'd be so happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you're talking a bit about kind of our platform and different platforms out there, uh, and which kind of brings the topic. I know when we went to to build in Primo, we looked at you know what tools are out there available for artists, and we found some. There was a series of art management tool. There is you know a million different marketplace, uh, but not very many platform who actually you know give you the ability 
to tell your story. Like a lot of the marketplace is, you know, they get you on the website, they try to move you as fast as possible to from I see it to a buy it. But in reality, when it comes time to buying art, it's kind of something you got to get familiar with. You slowly built a relationship with the artist, with their work, you know, an affinity to it. Um, and, and, you know, what we found is the story is important, right? The story does make a difference in the value of the art and the interest. What do you guys would say when sharing the story? What is important to share? How important do you think the story is? And if you'd recommend to an artist, what should they include in their story in order to have impact? Do you want to take you want to take it first, Phil? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think um, personally, I don't like to share. I'm an introvert. So it's very hard for me to share, but I think it's essential because we as artists are not selling commodities. We are selling an experience, we're selling an emotion and sharing is where the value is. Um, I, like, I think we have to share everything. We have to share the success, we have to share the failure, we have to share the adventure because the buyer wants to want in on the adventure and they want to be able to show your piece and say, this is how this was made and this is what happened to the artist and this is where they started and that's how you know, it evolved. Um, and that includes also um, accidents. Like in, in, in art, and often in science, accidents are really important and it's something we don't overlook and we take advantage of. And I have, a, uh, I have an example uh, about that. Um, I, had a, I had a table that was made out of glass. It was tampered glass and one day just exploded. It broke into pieces and we were very upset. And then as I was looking at this pile of, like we were collecting the glass, I was looking at this huge pile of glass and I, was, I looked at it and said, oh my God, this is material. This is something I can use to make something unique. And that's how an adventure starts. And you have to say this. And then I looked into ways of like bonding these heavy pieces of art together to make a piece. So these kinds of stories are essential to, to whoever wants in on the adventure. And but, I have, sorry. But I was going to say that was, that was a great one. I think, you know, I, I think I agree. Just sharing that significantly drives the interest in, in yeah. that piece. Yeah. And if, if, if I may, uh, the other story about the pieces I have behind, the, the yummy lips were created during the pandemic and during the confinement when all of us were like home and we couldn't go to the studio, we couldn't use the tools that we were used to, we couldn't use the materials that we were used to. And I had to stay home and figure out how am I gonna do this without going crazy? So I got myself uh, modeling on the computer. I got, uh, I mean, 3D modeling on the computer. I got myself a, a 3D printer. And I started looking to resins that I could use at home and experimenting and trying these things, failing, starting again, failing. And, and, <laughs> and in the end, what I wanted to create, because this was the pandemic and it was a sad time, I wanted to create something that would be heartwarming, something fun, something that would help us escape reality, whether we have pandemic or not. You know, we all want to escape reality sometimes. And that's how these pieces came about. So that that's, I think, the stories we need to tell because it connects us with emotion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That was that was a great piece. I, I wish I knew that when I first saw it. You know, I think that that significantly make it more interesting. Randa, tell us more about you know your approach to your story. Um, I noticed a lot of your piece have very you know, unique um, topics or um, or points that you. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your approach and what you think should be included when sharing your story? 
I'm so agree with Vera. We have to to mention everything about the story, about the, the painting and all the story uh, that's happened behind it. So there is two points I would like to mention. Uh, the first thing is that the past and the current life of the artist must to be mentioned also. And the artist's life is no less important than the, than his uh, painting. And also every painting must uh, mention the, the motif behind its production and link uh, uh, link it to, to the time period and psychological uh, state of the um, of the artist and his interest at that time exactly. So um, uh, let let me stop a little at this point, please. Uh, uh, the the way the artist thinks and work has a great impact on writing the story. Uh, so there is many artists who, who paint uh, their feeling without uh, any period study of the subject uh, they are working on. So, um, uh, and this, uh, in, in this case, I think it's uh, difficult to translate the feeling into the words. Uh, in another side, there are uh, many artists um, who chose a specific topic and to read about it very well before starting work. Those artists, uh, I think, can write their story easier. So before we write, we have to read a lot. To be an artist, uh, that is uh, meaning to know a lot about everything. Uh, for example, um, uh, you, uh, you can't work on the war topic, for example, uh, without any knowledge, uh, knowledge about uh, this state. You have to read, uh, you have to feel, you have to live as you who are suffering. Uh, only in this case, you will paint and write the impacting story that will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will touch deeply everyone. So how much you know, you can be an influencer. Uh, how much you read, um, 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 how much you read, uh, you, you touch the heart, how much you understand the human feeling and their psychology, uh, you can express their needs. Uh, so I think we have to wake up to our rules as an artist in this life, and we have to know our life is not uh, the property of uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's property of the public, not for ourselves. Um, and all this idea must be appear to the to to the public and be declared with the transparency and the clarity. Uh, plus that, um, I think uh, we have to, to mention every accident, uh, like Vera said, um, every special story behind, uh, behind uh, this painting, uh, any participa uh, participation in, in any uh, exhibition and uh, in which world, uh, in, in which country, um, if it's uh, participate in competition and if uh, this painting uh, won in this uh, competition, everything with uh, behind this painting, we have to to, to mention it. Yeah, and, and I know you've used the QR codes that that generated on Imprimo to tell the story. You know, I, you've you've mentioned a couple um, couple of the example where you use them during an exhibition. Yeah. What did you? What was the value to to you, Randa, when you used the QR codes during the exhibition? Like you used it. Why did you use it? And then what did you? What value did you get out of it? Yes, uh, my first uh, use of a QR was uh, at my last exhibition at Palais de Congrès de Montréal uh, last June. Uh, I feel the importance uh, of a QR, especially at this ev uh, event, because uh, there were nearly 9,000 people around the world and in many different languages. Uh, in this case, the QR really saved me um, the trouble of uh, explaining the painting to everybody. I was very happy that the, the audience knew me before uh, before uh, before speaking directly to me. Uh, more than that, um, uh, do, during the opening of the exhibition, uh, the, the artist doesn't have a lot of time to talk to everyone for a long time. Uh, through the QR, a person can enter our page on Imprimo and learn more. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, this creates greater curiosity to know more details about previous uh, painting and about our, uh, uh, about our uh, biographies at any available time uh, for the viewer. Uh, 
the, um, there is another advantage for uh, the QR code is, uh, is during the, the selling process. Uh, there is difference between uh, QR and PMO certificate and uh, the traditional sale uh, certificate of painting. The sale certificate is a proof of uh, that the translate of the ownership uh, uh, of this painting from the artist to the buyer. By um, uh, will, will the Imprimo certificate is real proof recorder on the blockchain uh, of the artist's creative ownership. So the QR like, um, like uh, the fingerprint of the, of the artist who can move it, uh, you can't move it, and you can't uh, modify it. Um, um, sorry, my mobile is ringing. Sorry, 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 sorry. No worries. Sorry. And for those of you who have never seen the, the um, certificate of creation, I will show you guys later. So if you're not too sure exactly what uh, Randa is referring to, you'll see it in a second. Keep on, keep, keep going, Randa. Okay, uh, so um, uh, last uh, last idea I want to say it's more over the uh, the, the QR uh, has become like imposed uh, uh, reality and we have to keep a pace with every uh, every technological development. Uh, at least we can appear like uh, uh, a professional artist to, to to the public. So the QR is very important, and the certificate which uh, which you, you which you create on your your Imprimo, it's very important for us. And I use it when I sell my painting. And hey, what about you, Vivo? I went to your exhibition at Gallery thirteen thirteen, and you're using the QR code. So why don't what, yeah. tell us more about your experience? Why you used it? You know what value you saw from it? I don't want to paraphrase Randa, who did a very good job, but I'll I'll just uh, tell you about this this experience. The last uh, I decided to use QR codes for my uh, last exhibition it was a, a group exhibition for my studio. And um, well, first of all, a lot of people are already uh, kind of knowledgeable about QR codes because they go to restaurants and they can see the menus. But I wasn't expecting too much out of it because I said, okay, you know, I don't know if they're gonna take the time to actually hover over the QR code. And, and I was actually pleasantly surprised because they did. A lot of people did. And I felt the value was, you know, when you go to an exhibition, you have a piece and a little descriptive underneath. And then if you want to know more, you have to find someone in the gallery to explain to you more or the artist, but you don't know the artist. So, but uh, Primo shows you a picture so you can go hunt for the artist. Um, and then, um, or you have to get the catalog, obviously. So right here with their phone, they had everything. They had my picture, they had my CV, they have the pieces that, I, that were on show. They could have had more pieces had I populated it you know, properly. They could have seen other pieces that I have done that are available. And, but the, the big gain I think was that, and that was, that was the surprise was that people emailed me during the show and after the show to connect and to learn more about the piece, the pieces. So that's, I think is, is, is a big advantage, communicating directly mm -hmm. with people that are interested. So I think this approach will eliminate a lot of paperwork, a lot of headache, like, uh, catalogs if you know if you've ever you know <laughs> contributed to a catalog it's a lot of work and if you have all the information in one place then the catalog becomes very easy to create and so you touch on the cv um and you said that you know you use a cv on imprimo um you know, a lot of artists are saying how you know the process of creating and updating the <laughs> cv is quite tedious um what are some of your kind of tips and tricks that you go about, you know, keeping your CV up to date, uh, you know, what is your approach and, you know, have you seen any different value from the Imprimo CV? Yes. 
You want to start with that? Okay. Yeah, do I take it, Randa? Or Vero? Yeah. As you like. It's okay. Go ahead, Vero. Go ahead, Vero. Okay. okay. So, uh, well, it's it's tedious, it's boring, and it takes time away from things we want to do, right? So, I usually I have everything in one place. I think centralization is essential. We all have various. Uh, various uh, versions of the CV, depending on who we're sending it to and what they need and what they want. And that's that's another problem is you have all this information and every time you apply for something or whatever, you need to give them exactly what they want in the format that they want. Um, so centralization and then um, just making sure that you do it for example i do it every time there's an event i go in and update all the versions and sometimes i mess up <laughs> i revise it later <laughs> but you know it's it's a discipline and you have to keep the mm. discipline that's something where i hope ampimo is going to be able to help <laughs> you know um in the future and hey, what about you randa what has been your experience with the with the cv so, Jedi, when you speak about the CV, you speak about the organization matter. And this is the big problem for, for every artist. Uh, and the CV is, uh, is one of this process of the organization. Uh, but very, it's very important, and we, we, we use it in every step we do. Uh, personally, I tried several times to write a professional CV and collect all my achievements uh, in it, but always I, I feel that it's not uh, professional as I want until a primo come. Uh, in fact, in fact uh, uh, at the beginning, I didn't know exactly what the benefit I will get from uh, from uh, your website. Um, when I start uh, with uh, with you, I I was trying to discover that uh, what you have. Uh, with the time, I really discovered many many benefits. I don't have uh, a lot of time to speak about all the benefits, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but but uh, the the CV is one of them. Um, which I note with the time how much my CV become professional. Just I added my information and you organize it, uh, everything in a good way. So uh, currently I linked the bio page on my website with, uh, with my CV page on Imprimo because I feel uh, that the Imprimo CV is better than uh, that, uh, that one I did. Uh, so you will find you will find that the link between two sites available on several pages uh, because I believe that introduced me to to the audience in more professional manner, and uh, that gives me um, a, a, a greater credibility for the people. Uh, well, and Primo, uh, uh, and Primo for me is uh, the organizer the manager of my artwork, the protector of my right, the, um, the, the official uh, presenter to present me to the people in the best possible way. All of this uh, can be achieved in the least possible time. Um, that required only some effort at the beginning to to build everything in my CV or in in general in profile in Imprimo, but uh, if, uh, now later um, every update uh, process take uh, from me uh, a few minutes, not more. So um, uh, when when I download the, the CV from Imprimo, I was surprised. When you see it in 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 the, the general page, it's okay, everything organized. But when I download and take it like a paper, I surprised it's very professional. Everything is good in it. What I want to put in my CV in a professional way, uh, you did you you do that for us. That's what um, what I like in my CV in in Amprim. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that you've seen you know, a series of different value yeah. from Primo. I know you have a pretty special story. Um, you know, before you dive into it, I want to say that when we built in Primo, we, we wanted to make sure that we provide tools that help your creative claims be more robust, right? We wanted that should something happen and your work was misused, that you had a profile that provided the evidence. Now, we're not registering 
copyright has per se we're registering copy cr creative claims right there's a little bit of a difference you're copywriting canada the second day you create something you know it belongs to you what we're registering is an evidence that you are the rightful creator of this so that you can show something uh, so that was our objective you know we have a really good idea of how this was going to work um and, and should something happen and, and Randa was the first one uh, who had something happen. Unfortunately, you had, you know, one of those things happening, but quite excited to hear that, you know, Imprimo did what we wanted to do. But I'd love if you could share that story. Uh, so, you know, where Rena created some NFTs, I'll let you kind of tell us more about that story. But uh, I think I think it'd be great for people to hear that. Yes, it was it was awful story and was <laughs> so uh, stressed about it. You, you can't imagine what happened with me in, 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 in this time. So um, around two months or three, I minted an NFT uh, on a new platform to, to sell. Uh, so after a few weeks, I was surprised to find that the website um, had shut down. Um, and what was uh, even more surprising was logging on the OpenSea and Wearable. I think uh, I think all the all the people know them, uh, so famous uh, website OpenSea and Wearable to see my NFT uh, publish it for the sale under the other name. It was clear someone has stolen my artwork to pass it off as as uh, at their own. Uh, so I sent an email uh, to both platform uh, with link to my website and uh, uh, my Imprimo profile and some pic some picture during the process of production of this uh, uh, this painting. So after a few days, the boss of the platform took stolen work down. So they burned burned them. So. Um, in the same time, a friend of mine had the same problem. Her painting was stolen and uh, posted to sell on the on um, as an NFT in the same platform. Uh, so I told her what I did, um, and she uh, she did the same, but uh, she doesn't have an Imprimo profile. Uh, she sent um, her website and a photo of the original pieces, uh, but. Unfortunately, the administration of the two websites refused to burn her NFT. Uh, this is the story in in short story. So <laughs> what I want so what I want to say is that Enfimo is a powerful assistant in uh, establishing our artistic ide uh, identity, and we. Uh, as an artist, uh, have to prove our artistic ident identity to protect our right. And I believe that, that the era of the, the artwork stolen has ended with Enfimo at the, at the lowest uh, possible cost. So uh, just I want to thank you, Enfimo, uh, from all my bottom of my heart for saving me in this situation. Well, we're we're really really happy that something could yeah. be done. Happy to see how fast it happened too. Uh, it was quite exciting. Uh, I want to say a big thank you for to the two of you. Thanks, Bevo. Thanks, uh, Randa. Uh, stick around. We'll have some questions for you at the end. Uh, I'll give everybody a quick tour of Imprima. We talked a lot about it. Some of you guys might know how it works. Uh, some of you might not. So we'll give you a quick uh, quick tour before I go. I know some of you have, have, have joined us since uh, before we got uh, since we got started. Uh, we have a promotion happened today i just put it in the chat uh if you want to join in primo your first six months are free uh you can simply click on the link and register the first six months are going to be automatically added to your account um and if you have any questions or you need help building your profile send us a message at info on imprimo.ca we'd love to help you with that and with this i will show you a little bit more about imprimo and i'll tell you uh go back to kind of our vision and what we want to do um, so when we started building in Primo, uh, again, the idea was to build a social network where, you know, artists would be able to present their work in a professional manner, create engagement, tell the story of their, their, their story as an artist, the story of their artwork, show the provenance events in the open domain, right? And then we built a series of different tools that helps the artists uh, manage their career. Many of them are based around promoting your career, 
uh, some of them that are coming. I'll tell you a little bit more as we go. Things that are coming up in the next eight weeks, you'll be able to, and I saw a question in the chat, can I, can I have uh, multiple CV. Uh, this is coming. You'll have the premium models coming out. When premium comes out, you'll be able to have custom CVs, which will be a custom URL, which mean randaijazi at imprimo.ca will be able to be your domain. Uh, you can choose that. You'll be able to have custom CVs, meaning you can have multiple different CVs and then download them as you see fit. And you'll be able to download them in a series of edit editable format. And lastly, uh, we'll have collection management. So you'll be able to come and create series and collections and so on. Uh, so this is all coming in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, so quite excited about that. The premium model will continue to evolve. We'll continue to add a lot more features to it. This is just the start. Um, but yeah, so we're quite excited about these change. So coming back to where we're at, today we built, you know, in Primo 1.0, which allow artists to position their, uh, present their work, organize their their work, you know, showcase their, their CV in an engaging way. Uh, and then as we go, we'll see uh, the next evolution will be integrating with Marketplace. Today, I'll tell you a little bit more about that because it's coming very soon where you'll actually be able to sell your work to Imprimo. We do not participate in the sales. We coordinate it, meaning you'll have a buy now buttons and it'll send you over to a website to sell it. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. And eventually we'll have the galleries that'll join in. They'll be able to showcase their exhibition. They'll be able, they will to claim the artist, which is very similar to some of the things that they have on their website. And we'll build other tools to help them manage their gallery business more effectively. And then, once, and then over the course of 2023, we'll have the art lovers coming on board where it allow the, the art lovers in the gallery to follow the career of the artist, follow the artwork that will send them notifications, letting them know that, you know, you've had a new exhibition, your piece has been sold or so on. It makes it very easily for your audience to keep in, to, to, to stay aware of what's happening with your career. So a lot of that is coming, you know, today I'll show where we're at so far, but you know, a lot more to come. So, uh, so keep, keep an eye on us. Uh, we'll keep, keep coming to these events and we'll show you more of what we got going. So this is in Primo. This is our landing page. The idea of the landing page was to make something very engaging where art lovers should come in and, and learn more about the work. Uh, the first thing we've heard is, um, just like, Instagram or Pinterest or so on, um, you know, it's not really easy to get the information about the artist and the piece and so on. And that was important. But we also heard that we don't want to see, we don't want that to compromise the look of the website or the artwork. So what we've done is when you hover over the image, when you hover over the image, the avatar of the artist, I'm showing you Barry here. So the avatar of the artist appears, the name of the artist, the name of the piece uh, appears. And then you see this thumbprint here, which shows that the creative claim was registered on the blockchain. I'll go about, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. I just wanted to show you that what this thumbprint was. So again, you can go and you can scroll here. It's an infinite scroll. So you can scroll as long as you desire. You have the ability to filter by different categories and medium. You have the ability to search. You can search here for your favorite artists and then select the artist from here. You have the ability to search from different uh, key, uh, keywords. You can search by artwork. Same filters as we have, the categories and the medium. You can search by artists. We heard that art is very much local. So you can see the name of the artist, the pronoun and the location, right? If you're from Surrey, BC, the likelihood that you buy BC Heart is much greater than if you're from St. John, Newfoundland. Uh, that's what we've learned. And therefore we adjusted the filter to reflect um, the region as well. So now let's look at an artist profile. Uh, some of the few, first few things you see on when you land on the profile would be the avatar the cover image, and then the artist statement here. Um, so, so here, what I would say is what you want when you create the avatar is just like Randa, you see her background is very uniform. Some people have stuff in the background that's very distracting, which makes it very hard to see, especially when I look at, you know, the artist view here is very small. So the more the things you have in the background here, the harder it is to actually see the face. So you want to have a well-lit picture and have the background as plain as possible. It's up to you. You can choose whatever you want. Those are just my recommendation. And then here we have the cover image. You know, the best thing that you can do for the cover image is you working in your studio. That's what we heard from art lovers. That's what we heard from galleries. That's what drives the most engagement. Randa, you see here, her with their words or um, where they're painting right i'll show you what um another artist um who 
he, you can really see him working in in uh, in his um, in his studio, which is quite interesting. Uh, so those would be our recommendation. The second best choice is probably what Velo did here, which is putting your favorite artwork. Right, so those would be our recommendation of cover image. Again, you can put whatever you like, uh, but this is what we've heard from art uh, lovers and galleries that has the most meaningful impact. Here, this section, I would say, we obviously didn't do a very good job at trying to explain what it is because very little people use it properly, but here's what it's intended for. This section is where it's your, your billboard. This is where you can say, I have an exhibition happening on this day. I hope to see you all there, right? This I have this new artwork that I just created. Come and have a look. This is where you can announce anything that you want. When people land on your profile is the very first thing they see. We have a default that appears. So if you don't fill it, it's not gonna go blank. It's automatically gonna say something about yourself as long as you added um, a bio. But this is could really be more used by all users on Primo to kind of one quick fact that drives interest to keep people from going and looking deeper into your profile. Then we have the bio here, your long biography, and you have the ability to link all of your different social channels, your website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, blog, and so on. And then finally, we have the make an inquiry button. You'll see when I click this that the word representative comes up. The reason why is this, this can be redirected to whoever represent you. If that's an art dealer, the message can go directly to him. If, the, if it's a gallery, it can go directly, it could go directly to the gallery. If it's yourself, the message can go to yourself. So you have the ability to decide who go who this goes to. Many artists say I'm represented by a gallery, they don't like me doing this. This could that literally you, you could show them how it works and see that the message is being sent to them directly. So this is a way to, in, to enhance the discovery of your work while providing more opportunity for your relationship you have with the gallery, it's certainly not trying to disrupt it. So now when we look at the artist's CV, right? So some of what we've heard from many people is I land on the website and I see a black and white Word document, PDF, HTML, which kind of looks like this. And for, for many galleries, that says a lot. But for most art lovers like me, it doesn't, you know, if unless you know what the gallery is and so on, it is very difficult to understand the magnitude of some of these, these events. So what we wanted to create is something that was a lot more engaging. Uh, and for example, by when you click on the plus, you can see that you're able to link each of the artwork record and then provide different type of evidence. The evidence could be images of you at the, the exhibition, there's text, they can be video, they can be supporting documents. Uh, and this does a few things. Number one, it makes it a whole lot more engaging for whether they're galleries or, or their art lovers. It tells such a deeper story about the event and really allow to build a stronger connection with your work. Number one. Number two, it really significantly increased the trust in the provenance of end the claims that you're making. You know, in this case, it would be very difficult to tell that Rando was not exhibiting these works. We can see a picture of her doing it, right? So this is really, really valuable. Uh, many people have said to us, whether they're galleries or you know different artists or art lovers, like this piece has been really great uh, and a lot and very engaging. Now, some of the things that we've done to reduce the administration, I'll show you in a second. So we wanted to eliminate as much of the CV update that you can do. And I'll show you what we've done and how does that work. So, but before we do that, I'll tell you a little bit more about um, the, the artwork records. So the first thing is we talked about the blockchain registration. So I wanna take a second to explain to you guys exactly how this works. What is blockchain? Blockchain is the equivalent, it's a ledger, it's a spreadsheet. It's a spreadsheet that is shared in an open domain, which is visible to everybody, right? And this each entry on the blockchain is permanent. What does that mean? If Randa created this piece and then she so she, and since she said I created it in 2021, but accidentally she put 2020. And then she realized, oh damn, I didn't want to put 2020, I wanted to put 2021. So she goes and she changed the date. What's going to happen is there's going to be an entry that says that Randa Ajazi created that piece in 2020. Uh, in 2020. And then when she puts the second one, a second entry is going to appear. 
say in 2021. So every time you record something, it is permanent. What is the value of this is nobody can ever say that this was changed after the fact because every single transaction, every single edit is timestamped. And that's the value when it comes down to, pr to proving your the provenance event that, this is your, that you are the rightful owner. That's one thing that you can point to that is timestamped and is really, uh, nobody can say you, you changed it after the fact. So what do we register? We register the name of the artist, the name of the artwork, the metadata about the work, the copyright holder, the copyright year, and the person who made the claim. So now we have a registration on a permanent ledger that is shared publicly that says that Randa, the someone called Randa Ijazi has made a claim. And this is what many, many companies have as their way of registering, which is a good step forward. But how do how am I sure that the person who registered that is actually Randa? Maybe it's somebody else. So what we've done is on the other side, on Imprimo, we require that 100% of artists verifies their, their ID which means you have to take a selfie, you take a picture of your driver's license, we match the two images, we match your name, and then you're approved, which means 100% of artists on Imprimo are who they pretend to be. There's no bad actor. If you were trying to do something malicious, we would see that you would try to change your name, for example, to another artist and pretend something. We would all see that in the administrative view and we prevent you from doing it. Or at least we would flag it and have a conversation, right? So we know that the people on Imprimo are who they pretend to be giving their ideas verified. And at the other end, I have a claim on the blockchain. What we have done is we've created this cryptographic signature, which is the equivalent of signing your artwork, but digitally, that ties the two of them together, which says that a registration was done on the blockchain by Randa Hijazi, whose ID was verified by on Imprimo on that date. This is how the process works. Long story short, you don't need to remember any of this. All this is 100% automated. Uh, you know, if you, if you didn't understand anything I said, all you got to remember is this, all this value is built for you. It's fully automated. You have absolutely nothing to do. And all this is done for you. Uh, we understood that many artists are not really good with technology and we wanted to make this as simple and easy as possible. And that's why that process is fully automated for you. When you click on the little thumbnail here, this appears and you can see the data was created, who created it and the blockchain ID. If I click here, you would see that this transaction was actually recorded and you could see all the details about it. Now, the second thing we saw is we look at many different social platform. I'll use Instagram as an example, but many platform are the same. If I go on Randa's uh, Instagram and I decide, okay, I'm gonna copy it. I could probably copy it within, she's got a pretty long profile. So it might take me a little bit more than five minutes, maybe an hour. Uh, but after that, as long as I'm not doing anything, any scam or anything like that, it's going to be very difficult for Randa to get my profile down, right? Unless I do something malicious and it's a, long, a tedious process and sometimes it never works. So we wanted to eliminate that. And that's why we created the verified ID at the beginning so that you cannot do that. The second thing that we realized is very easy on many platforms to steal somebody's work. So some of the steps that we've done is you can't right click on the images to save them. That's not no bulletproof uh, system by no shape or form. We can always screenshot it. For that reason, we have reduced the resolution of the images. So you do you would end up with a very low resolution, not low, but low enough that you cannot do something meaningful with it. Um, you know, so you would end up with a low resolution image and there's a thumbprint that appears. So you, this gonna be, is gonna be as part of the image. Now, what we've done to allow artists to leverage the system is when you share, if I share and I share on LinkedIn, for example, and I shared this as a post, the image appeared the exact same way. It's probably gonna actually look better than that when it, when it actually goes live on the post. Uh, and then, but now when this appears and I see that image and I'm curious and I click on it, oh, I land exactly on the artwork record where I can see everything. So that can be shared on all social platform. The only one that you can't is Instagram because it will not allow you to share images from a different website. However, the best way that you can use Instagram is either I would say Linktree on your Instagram allows you to have multiple links. So you could link all your different artwork record, right? And say, for example, hey, how, you know, look, link in bio, see the artwork record, X, name X. That would be one of the options. Or you can simply have your, you know, if you don't want to use link three, you can simply have in your your Imprimo profile listed there and people can click and discover that. If you need some help into how you can use uh, Imprimo and Instagram together, send us a message in Primo, uh, info at Imprimo.ca. We'd be happy to show you the different ways you can, you can work with that. But for the other platform, quite easy. You press share and then it will share the artwork record as an image. 
and make it very easy for people to go back to your image and see the full artwork record. Um, and then what we've done is, again, you have the Make Inquiry button. Here you can list everything that the work is available for. Soon this is going to be redesigned. Today when you make an inquiry, uh, it goes all to one representative. You will have the ability to have different representative for different uh, functions. For example, you know, I want to have a reproduction license. Uh, someone like Copyright Visual Art could be managing uh, those royalties for you. And maybe you want the link to go to them because they're managed on your behalf. You know, maybe you have a certain piece that's being exhibited or sold by a gallery, but, you know, they're not representing you um, exclusively and then therefore some piece goes to them and some piece you would like to go to you so we're, we're aware of this and we're modifying it but for today all the inquiries goes to one person which you can select who that person is in the administrator view now the next thing that we have here is the process this is going to be relabeled i think as of monday to the creation process um and, but this part here i would say is the most important section on your imprimo profile this is where you can say, what is your inspiration? The story that Randa and Veronique talked about, you know, the story about the glass being broken, like this goes here. This is where it matters. This is what is interesting. If you had a screen, if you had a picture of that glass being broken, you could enter it there and show some different stage of the process. This would be ideal. And this does two things. Drive significant interest from the art lovers and the art buyers who are looking at your work and getting to know the stories and, you know, and being able to repeat that stories to their friends and families, you know, when they have the piece. This is what this is where they would do that. The second thing it does is significantly increase the trust in the claims that you're making because we're able to see the piece in progress. So let me show you guys what would that uh, mean. There's a piece here which I think you did a very excellent job. At this, this is Grant McConnell. Grant has a video that walks us through the entire, uh, um, the entire explanation of the series. You can see his inspiration, the piece that was in creation, and then I see him do it. You know, it'd be very difficult to say Grant McConnell did not paint that piece. Maybe this is a reproduction, but at the very least, we can see him in there, which significantly elevate the trust. There's never any guarantee. It's not an authentication process, but it really elevate the trust in what you're reading. So you know that there's a very high likelihood that Grant is the rightful owner and creator of this piece, giving those evidence. So I want to get back to... Um, your artwork timeline. So what we've done here, the artwork timeline is your provenance event. We made it easy for you to share the story of your artwork through the provenance event. You have the same uh, option to press the button and then you see when you add images uh, and videos and so on, you get this little red bubble that appears that says evidence provided. So, and when a claim looks like this, you know, we can see that something has happened not 100% sure what it was. Uh, and, you know, there's no real evidence in that jet support of it. So if you do add evidence, you see this appears, which again is flagging to the end users. Hey, the, you know, this there's an, an, more, more evidence that has been provided here and you should have a look at it. So this, this is the first part. Second part to this is when you enter into your artwork record and you add into the uh, timeline event, what happened is it automatically populate onto your CV. So if I look here, June 2021, beat one, and I go into Randa's CV, and June 2021, beat one, I have the same artwork record. And not only that, but as you can see, this event is, she had close to a dozen different pieces. She entered that event one time for all 12 pieces, tagged the 12 pieces, and they will all have a, an, an artwork timeline event created so that should reduce significantly the the administration so if we look at um you know the the um the cv events let me just show you what it looks like into the the uh, on the administrator view so when i click on the timeline these are th these are the different options this is what you can add as a timeline event you know so you can see there's just that uh, there's about 10 here if i click on my cv and I go to add an event, you'll see that most of these are repeating again. There's some of them that don't. For example, scholarship, teaching and mentoring, residency, um, you know, um, what else here? Um, mem me uh, membership, those are the things that you'll have to do separate. Most of them are repeating here, which means that when I go to my artwork, I click on it and I add on the timeline. If you work from here, 
you significantly reduce your administration. You don't have to do this about your CV. It's automatically going to be updated. Uh, and many of our artists that we work with say that they no longer have to do anything about keeping their, their CV updated. There's some cases going to be outside of that, but that was the intent here is to reduce that administration. Now, uh, I talked about the creation process a while ago. This is where you create it. You can add images, videos, uh, all kinds of different description. But going back to our image, so now we've talked about how to present your work in a digital way. Now let's talk about how you present your work in a physical way. So some of the things that we talked about, uh, and Randa mentioned it, is the certificate of creation. So these are automatically generated. You have nothing to do. You simply come into your artwork, you click on certificate and disappears. The certificate is gonna say the name of the work, the name of the artist, where it was created, I didn't enter it, so that's why it's not there. The signature of the artist, you don't have to have it there. It's entirely up to you. The date that the certificate was created, the date that the ID was verified, the metadata about the work, the date that the claim was registered, and if I would have published, this would have a blockchain ID. I didn't, that's why it says pending. And then finally, you have the QR code. So why this has a few purposes. Number one is when Randa sells the piece to me, I scan the QR code, I land on his artwork record, and I get to hear, I get to learn the full story. But in reality, if Serena sold it to me, I probably know who she is, and I probably know the story myself. So I keep the piece, and then I decide, you know, I'm, uh, two years later, I sell it to my cousin. My cousin does not know who Randa is. As a matter of fact, he may not even know that Randa is the owner of that piece, is the creator of that piece. And he has very no way possible of finding that, finding that out unless I tell him and I share that information. With the certificate of creation, as you move the piece from hand to hand, you're, they're able to scan the QR code and come back and read about Randa, which makes it much easier for whoever has the piece to go back and to understand the story of the artist, you know, the story of the piece and so on. So really important into, you know, continuing to control the narrative about who you are as an artist and your work. And more importantly, today, when I go into the piece, I can come and register a sale. So all your piece who are sold, you should register a sale here to signal to the end users that, you know, or the buyers that this piece is sold. So today we can register it in the primary market, which means that Randa can register a sale when she sells it to me. What we're working on is when we create the art, the uh, art lovers account, the secondary market are going to be able to contribute to the provenance event. So my cousin could come on Randa's profile and say, I bought it in from JD and that not from JD, but I bought it on that day and be able to contribute to the events. The galleries are going to be able to do that. You know, the, the organization like, you know, Carfac and RAV are going to be able to attest to the claims that you're making about being a member of their organizations, which will significantly enhance once again, the trust in the provenance event. So that's a little bit about the certificate of creation. You know, if you only use it to give professional documentation, I think many artists that really like it for that. Uh, I think, but personally, I think that is worth exploring the value of the QR code that's tied to it. Um, and then finally, the QR code itself. So you have the ability to go into print that same thing. You simply click on it. Click on QR code, this, the, the window appear, and then you can print it. You, and then you, you cut the QR code like Randa and Vero did during your exhibition. You affix it next to your artwork, and then people simply come and scan it, and they're able to know the full story um, of your work. So with that, that brings it the demo to an end. Uh, I want to make... Um, I want to make sure I answer everybody's question here. I guess there's one more thing I want to say before I go. Um, Barry, I am going to share your profile on Imprimo. Are you okay with that? If you're not, if you can just go on the microphone and let me know. Because I can't see the chat right now. It's fine. My ego is big enough for that. <laughs> okay, so here's what's coming. Okay, so here's Barry's profile on Imprimo. So I'll just show you guys quickly. Um, and what's coming is we built a partnership with Partial Gallery. They're gonna be our first integration, right? So I wanna show you guys a little bit of what's coming, right? So today, when I go on Barry's profile, I can see his ID is verified. Here is his cryptographic signature. You don't have to remember any of this, but this is what identifies you as a unique user. And we have a pretty detail and ability to have pretty detailed information on Imprimo. If I use a record that is very detailed like this one, there's, a, there's the, the process, there's the artwork timeline, 
Uh, there's the verified ID and all these information. So today, if I look at Barry's profile on partial, you can see he has the same avatar. I can see his name and a little bit of his information. You see a little bit of his um so here I see a CV. No, I don't see your CV here, but you have the ability to add the CV on the side. And I have some information about the work. When I click on it, this work appear. What you can expect very soon is, when well, I say very soon, it might be up to four months, um, but is on Imprimo, you'll have a button here that says buy now. And when I click buy now here, I will lay in on partial galleries which I'll be able to sell the piece. So we heard from many of our users that they wanted to be able to sell their work. Uh, we do not want to participate in the work, but we're more than happy to coordinate it. And that's how we're going to do it. So we'll start with online galleries and then we'll move to physical galleries. Partial is, is the first one, there'll be others. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go with that one. We like them quite a bit. We think they're, they're doing a great service. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about partial uh, partial gallery, you can either so you can send us an email, info at imprimo.ca, and we'd love to introduce us to some of our friends at Partial. So again, just what's, what's going to look like on Imprimo side, there'll be a buy now button, which will allow me to redirect here and then be able to purchase the piece. Now, when I go on partial, what you're going to see is here, I would see the verified ID from Imprimo. I would see the blockchain registration of the work when I click on the artwork. I would see the artwork timeline. I will see the creation story. I'll see the enhanced metadata about the work, and I will see the cryptographic signature. All of this with no action whatsoever. So today, Barry came create a profile on partial, and then he went and he created a profile in Primo. When this is completed, you're going to go on partial, you're going to put your email, you're going to say link in Primo, all the information in one click is going to be on partial. So we're doing this to eliminate the amount of times you have to enter the information on each platform. So we have a lot of partners that we're trying to build relationship with, some of them that we've done, some of them that we're working on, uh, to be able to allow you to go in and Primo, enter the data, and then you can use that data everywhere else. So we have you know, a, lot of, a lot of aspiration of doing that with every platform. And for the time being, we're starting with Partial. Uh, they're a great online gallery. If you got a question about it, send us an email. We'd love to answer that.